In this video, we'll be covering Chapter 11, Section 7, its events involving and. We'll also be covering conditional probabilities. This is the last section in the unit and for the semester. Let's begin with independent events. Independent events is when the occurrence of an event has no effect on the probability of another event. An example would be is if I flip this coin, will it have an impact if I roll this dice? Since this coin does not impact the outcome of this event, these are referred to as independent events. This one has no bearing on how this one will react. So when we have events that are independent and we have that word and, what we're doing is multiplying the probability of those two events occurring. This is very similar to the counting principles. For example, remember we had so many shirts to pick from and we had so many pants to pick from. It didn't matter if I pick a color shirt versus the color pants. Those two are independent events. So what we would normally do when they're independent is we would multiply that together. But this time, instead of doing it using the counting principles, we're doing it with the probabilities. It's still the same concept. Let's look at this example here. It says, find the probability of green occurring on two consecutive plays on a roulette wheel. So remember, when you spin a roulette wheel, uh, one spin does not have an impact on the second spin. There are 38 compartments. 18 of those are black, 18 of those are red, and we have the two that are green. So what is the probability that the roulette wheel will land on green? Well, since there are two that are green out of a total of 38, we can simplify that to be 1 over 19. So the probability of getting two in a row is 1 out of 19 times 1 out of 19, which is 1 over 361. This is the probability of getting two greens in a row. Problem two says to find the probability of a family having four boys in a row. Again, independent events because one pregnancy does not impact the outcome of a second pregnancy. The probability of having a boy is going to be one half because you can get one boy out of two genders, a boy or a girl. So having four is going to be one half times one half times one half times one half. The probability of having four boys would be one over 16. So another way to look at this, if I were to do it in the calculator and multiply this by 100, you can see that this is 6.25%. So what we can assume here is that out of all couples or parents who have four children, 6.25% of those families will have either four boys or could have four girls. So on this next page here, it says the probability of an event happening at least once. Let's look at an example here. Let's say we have vehicles. A family can either have zero cars in their household, one car, two cars, or three or more cars, okay? So, so if I'm wanting to find the probability of having at least one car, what I'm going to say is that I would count this probability, this probability, and this probability, okay? So I would add up all these. Well, this is the same thing as using the complement that we did in the last section, where I can also say, well, that's the same thing as 1 minus the event not even happening. Well, 1 minus having no cars is the same thing as the probability of having one car, the probability of having two cars, or the probability of having three or more cars. Because when I add up all these probabilities together, we're always going to have a total of 1. Let's look at this example here. It says, if the probability that the South Florida will be hit by hurricane in any single year is 5 over 19, part A, what is the probability that South Florida 
will be hit by a hurricane in four consecutive years. Now, consecutive means in a row. So we would have a hurricane, a hurricane, a hurricane, and a hurricane. Well, since the probability of having a single hurricane in one year is 5 over 19, if you have a hurricane on the second year, it doesn't depend if it had a hurricane the year before. These are independent events. The probabilities will stay the same every year. So what you're going to basically do is just multiply all of these probabilities together. You get this particular fraction. That comes out to this 0 0.005. So the probability of getting four hurricanes in one year is extremely small. It doesn't mean that it cannot happen. It just means that the likelihood of it occurring is really, really small. Let's look at part B. It says, what is the probability that South Florida will not be hit by a hurricane in the next four years? Well, if your probability of getting a hurricane is 5 out of 19, that means the probability of not getting a hurricane has to be 14 out of 19 because you're either going to have a hurricane or you're not going to have a hurricane. There's no in-between ground here. So you're doing the exact same concept, but this time the probability is 14 out of 19. So if I multiply all those probabilities together, I get this fraction, which is approximately 0.295. That means that the probability of not having a hurricane for four years in a row is about 29.5%. Let's look at part C. What is the probability that South Florida will be hit by a hurricane at least once in the next four years? Well, this one's a little bit harder to explain. Let's go ahead and start with a, a tree diagram. So remember what we have is we have two options for year one. We could get a hurricane in year one, or we cannot have a hurricane in year one. Okay. Year two means that we can have a hurricane or not have a hurricane. For year three, we also have the option of having a hurricane or not having a hurricane. I'm going to go ahead and continue this pattern just like this. So now that I have this table complete, we can see here in this particular path, it's saying that it's possible to have four hurricanes and zero no hurricanes in the four years that it's saying. In this option, we have, we have hurricane, hurricane, hurricane for the first three years, no hurricane for year four. So here we're seeing three hurricanes, one no hurricane. Okay. Here we have two hurricanes, no hurricane, and then a hurricane. So this is another way it could happen. So three hurricanes, one no hurricane. In here, we have two hurricanes and then two no hurricanes. So here we have a two to two option. If I continue the table here, this is what it will look like. So here are all the options. This is for the first one, second, third. It says here, what is the probability that South Florida will be hit by a hurricane at least once in the next four years? Okay, so let's look at this. How many different ways can these events happen? Well, we have one, two, three, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There are 16 ways that this can occur, which makes sense because there's two options here, two options here, two options here. Either it's going to be a hurricane or not a hurricane. 
and then two options in year four. That comes out to 16. So we would expect 16 options. Now, let's look and see how many ways can at least one occur. Well, here has four, that would count. Here has three hurricanes, that's at least one. Here's at least one, again at least one, at least one, at least one. Here we have zero hurricanes. Everything else, all our other options, have at least one hurricane occurring. So there's only one way that no hurricanes will occur. So when you have that word at least one, you want to have one minus the probability of having no hurricanes. So the probability of having no hurricanes is listed in part B. So the probability of having at least one hurricane is going to be 0 0.705. So here you're going to definitely have at least one hurricane. Another thing you need to be careful about is that the probability of having no hurricanes is not going to be equally likely because the probability of having a hurricane is not 50-50. It's 5 out of 19 versus 14 out of 19. Let's go back and say, what are the probabilities for each of these events occurring? I know that the probability of having four hurricanes in four years is going to be 0 0.5. Zero, zero, 005. I also know that having no hurricanes in four years in this particular case is going to be 0 0.295. What we could do is find the probability of each one of these scenarios. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this one here. If I wanted to find out the probability of having three hurricanes, I know that having a hurricane is 5 out of 19. So what I'm going to do here is say 5 divided by 19. But remember, that's for three years. What's the probability of not having a hurricane? That's going to be 14 out of 19 for having no hurricane. So this, I'm going to times it by 14 out of 19. When I press enter, I'm going to get this value here. And that's having three hurricanes and one no hurricane. So I'm going to go ahead and put that value here, 0 0.013. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at three decimal places. Now here's the good news. So I can go ahead and say this is the same thing as this, which is the same thing as this one right here, because three hurricanes and one no hurricane. It doesn't matter where it falls. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit easier for us and do it like this. Again, three hurricanes, one no hurricane. It's going to be the same chances. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and calculate what's the probability of getting two hurricanes and two non-hurricanes. Well, all I'm going to do here is saying I'm going to have 5 over 19 for two chances and 4 out of 19 for also two chances. That's going to be this so I'm going to go ahead and put that here, 0 0.03, and I'm going to use 8. Since this is a 5, I'm going to round this to an 8. So for two hurricanes in, in four years, the chances is going to be about 3.8%. So anytime I see 2 and 2, I'm going to use the exact same. Okay. Now let's go ahead and figure out the last scenario where we have one hurricane and three no hurricanes. Well, the probability of having a hurricane is going to be 5 over 19. I'm just going to put that to 1. And no hurricane, I'm going to raise this to a 3. This is the probability of having one hurricane and three years without a hurricane. So I'm going to put this as 0 0.105. Now, when I go back and I add all of these up, what I can expect is my probability to be 1 because these are all the possible ways that it can happen. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and, and add all of these numbers up together. Okay. 
Now that I've added them all together, I should expect this probability to come out to exactly 1. Let's see what happens. There's my 1. So now that I see that it's exactly 1, and I say at least, I'm just basically subtracting the 0.295. The probability of having at least one hurricane is going to be 0 0.705, which is what we calculated right here. On this page here, I essentially did the exact same thing that I did on this page over here. Let me show you. Here I have 4, choose 1. Here's the probability of having a hurricane. Here's the probability of not having a hurricane. What I'm basically saying is there's four ways that this could happen. Let's see. One hurricane in four years. So let's see how many ways that this could happen. One hurricane in four years. There's one way it could happen. If, if the hurricane was on year one, here's the second way it could happen. If the hurricane was in year two, the third way it could happen is if the hurricane was in year three. The fourth way it could happen is if the hurricane was in year four. So there's four ways that one hurricane can happen. So there's four ways. This particular one says there's two hurricanes in four years. So I'm doing four choose two. Well, in this case, there's six ways that that could happen. Let's look at that here. Two hurricanes, this is the first way it could happen. You could have the hurricane the first two years and not in the last two years. That's one way. Here's the second way it could happen. You could have a hurricane, no hurricane. The third year you could have a hurricane, and then you could have no hurricane in year four. This is the second way two hurricanes can happen. The next way would be hurricane in year one and a hurricane in year four. So this is the third way it could happen. Another option would be no hurricane in year one, but you are having hurricanes in years two and three, but not in year four. So here's two hurricanes in years two and three, and the other two are not hurricanes in years one and four. That's the fourth way it could happen. The fifth way it could happen is having no hurricane, hurricane, no hurricane, and hurricane. So the hurricanes are occurring in years two and four. That's the fifth way it could happen. Okay. The last way it could happen is right here. If there's no hurricane the first two years, but there is a hurricane in the last two years. So that's the sixth way two hurricanes can happen. That's where this six comes from. Okay, so this is the probability for that occurring. The probability of having three hurricanes in four years, there's four ways that that could happen. Let's take a look. Here's one way it could happen, two ways it could happen, three ways it could happen, four ways it could happen. Okay, so there's four ways that that could happen. There's only one way it could happen to have four hurricanes in four years. And there's only one way to have no hurricanes happen in four years. There's no way that these you would expect these two to be the same because it's not a 50-50% chance of having a hurricane every year. The probability of having a hurricane in one year is only 5 out of 19. That's less than half. So having four in four years is really unlikely. Okay, so we've talked about independent events, which... Let's just refresh. Means that if I were to flip a coin, it doesn't impact uh, what number I would roll on a die. So, what is dependent events? Well, dependent events is going to be the occurrence of one event that has an effect on the probability of the other event. So, let's just take an example. Here I have a few cards. Okay, I have five cards. So let's look at them real quick. Um, I have all of these cards and I want to know what is the probability that I am going to choose an ace. Well, since there's one ace out of five, my probability right now is one out of five. Okay, so let me mix them up real quick. And I'm going to say, okay, 
What is the probability of picking the ace? Well, it's going to be 1 out of 5. So in this case, I did not pick an ace. So what's my probability now? Is it still 1 over 5? Well, no. If we picked a 10 the first time and we did not replace it, our probability now is going to be 1 out of 4. But what happens if I pick the ace the first time? Well, if I pick the ace the first time, what's my probability of getting an ace on the second row? Well, it's a 0% because I've already picked it. There are no other aces here. So it honestly, it just depends on the card that you pick. That is an example of what dependent events are. Here's our equation. And when we have that word and, we are going to be uh, doing a multiplication, okay? But here's the part that we need to include. It says the probability of A times the probability of B given that A actually has occurred. So let's go ahead and look at an example here. You are dealt two cards from a 52 um, card deck. Find the probability of getting two kings. All right, well, here's our first slot. What's the probability of getting two kings? And this is going to be without replacement. All right, so anytime you have dependent events, it's without replacement. So the first probability you have is you're going to get 4 out of 52 because there's, remember, 4 kings out of 52 cards. If you do pick one of those 4, what's the probability of getting a king on the second try? Well, if you picked one king the first time, that means we only have 3 kings left. So our probability has changed. Now we have three, but we also only have 51 cards because we kept the king in our possession. So the probability of getting the kings the first time is four out of 52, and the probability of getting the king the second time is three out of 51. All we're doing here is multiplying the numerators together, the denominators together, and then simplify. Your calculator can do all of that for you. Let's look at number five. You are dealt three cards from a 52 card deck. Find the probability of getting three hearts. Well, let's go back. How many hearts are in a center deck? Well, here are my hearts. And remember we had said there's exactly 13 cards for each suit. So we have 13 cards out of 52 for our very first try. Let's say we do get a heart the first time and we keep it. So now we only have 12 hearts out of 51 because we've removed this one from here. So now we have 12 out of 51 for our second card. Let's say our second card is picked and we got a king. Well, how many hearts do we have left? We're only going to have 11 hearts. Out of this time, 50 cards because we've already picked two. The first time we did it, we got a seven hearts. And the second time we did it, we got a king of hearts. So now there's 11 out of 50 left to choose from. So all I did here was go ahead and multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then simplify. So now let's look at the conditional probability. This is slightly different. Conditional probability is the probability of an event assuming that event A has already occurred. So let's look at this one here. This is a slightly different notation. This is the way we would um, see it. It's written as the probability of B. This little line is like saying given A. So the probability of B given that A has occurred. The way we write that out in long notation is that these two are going to be together with the and, and then whatever's in the denominator is going to stay in the denominator. So it will be the probability of, of B and A occurring out of the probability of just A occurring. These are on your formula sheet. If you look here, I have them right here. Okay, This is the exact same thing. If I just wanted to divide by the probability of A on both sides, I get the exact same thing that I have written here. Let's look at this example. Let's look at this example. Number six. A letter is randomly selected from the English alphabet. Find the probability of selecting a letter that precedes H 
given that the outcome is about. So what we're going to do is you see this word given, we're going to assign the event B in this case as a letter that precedes H. So here we're going to put precedes H. This word given means use that line and then anything after it will go in the denominator. Well, we want to find out the probability that the outcome was a vowel. So here we're going to say, hey, we know we got a vowel. What is the probability that the letter was before H? So let's go ahead and do this. The probability that the letter that we chose is before H and a vowel divided by the probability of it being a vowel. So the only thing here that I did was I want it to look at both of these things. It says that word and. So what letters are before H and a vowel? Well, only A and E are vowels before H. But there are five vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. So our probability here is two out of five. Let's look at this other example. It says you are dealt one card from a 52 card deck. Part A, find the probability of getting a black card given that the card you were dealt is a spade. So let's look at this one. Here again, the numerator is going to be the probability of getting a black card. So that's going to be first. When you see that given, put your line there and then find the event for the second part that the card you were dealt is a spade. So here I put spade. So when we were writing this out the long way, remember you want both of these things with that word and in the numerator and whatever's in the denominator can stay in the denominator. So here it says the probability of being a black card and a spade divided by just being a spade. Okay. Well, how many cards are black and a spade? Well, go back to our table here and you can see that how many cards are spade and black? Well, actually all of them, right? There, there are 13 uh, black spades. So here I put 13 divided by the probability of being a spade. Well, this is the part that we know we have. So how many cards are spades? Well, there's only 13 spades. So the probability of getting a black spade is 1 or in other words, 100%. You have a 100% chance of getting a black card if the card you chose was a spade, 100% chance. Part B, it says find the probability of getting a spade given the card was black. So notice here, now I have the spade in the numerator and I have the black card in the denominator. Well, if I know that my card is black, what's the probability that it was a spade? So slightly different notation. We're going to go ahead and put both of these things back in the numerator, spade and a black card, and then the black card being in the denominator. So go back to your table. Uh, yeah, black spades, there's still only 13 of them. So I put 13 here, but how many cards are black cards? Well we have spades and we have clubs. So we have two rows, or in other words, 26 cards that are black. So the probability of getting a spades, if I know I have a black card, is going to be one out of two. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this last problem here. It says, express the probability as a decimal and, if needed, round to three decimal places. Find the probability that the U.S. women aged from 40 to 49 has a positive mammogram given that she has breast cancer. So let's look at this type of table here. So what I went ahead and did is um, wrote this out in a little table and we're going to go ahead and work this one out together. Okay. So remember here it says a positive mammogram, that's going to be the first part, so I'm going to say the probability of having a positive mammogram, given that's that line that she has breast cancer, so I'm going to put a C. So when I'm writing this out, I'm going to have the probability of being positive and have cancer over the probability of you just having cancer. So let's look at this one here. 
probability being positive in cancer. Well, here's a positive mammogram, and here they have cancer. How many are positive with cancer? Well, that's 720 that are both. So we have 720 at the numerator. Probability of having cancer. Well, how many people all together have cancer? If you go straight down, you have your 800 here. Okay, so all you're going to do is simplify this, and you should get 9 out of 10. The probability of having a positive mammogram, knowing that you have cancer, is going to be 90%. Part B, find the probability that a U.S. woman aged 40 to 49 has breast cancer, given that she has a positive mammogram. So let's go ahead and look at this situation. Again, now we're going to have the cancer first. So I'm going to put probability of cancer. There's my given. And here, this is going to be the positive mammogram. So notice the probability of having cancer and being positive doesn't change from this part to this part. That's still going to be 720. What changes? The denominator. Now we're not looking at the probability of having cancer, we're looking at the probability of having a positive mammogram. Well, how many people altogether have a positive mammogram? Well, now the total is 7,664. So we have that there. Um, use your calculator to simplify. I'm going to go ahead and do that here. I have 720 divided by 7664. And then I get this and then change it back into a fraction. And here we go. We have 45 out of 479, which is approximately 9%. The probability of having breast cancer, given that you had a positive mammogram, is only going to be about 9%. So just because you test positive for having a mammogram doesn't mean that you have breast cancer. But if you have breast cancer, there's a 90% chance that you will have a positive mammogram. So that's how we know whether or not some of these exams or tests that we um, develop are actually working. We have to determine if it's accurately predicting the breast cancer rates in this case. Okay, that concludes 11.7. Uh, we are done with Unit 4. We are done with the semester. Um, so just let me know if you have any questions.